This is the unabridged history of the Sand People and how they came to be on Tatooine, which the player can learn in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. When confronting the Sand People chieftain in their compound on Tatooine over their murders of the local Zerka Corporation, we have the rare opportunity to ask, with the aid of HK-47, the history of his people. Although it is a question wrought with danger, as it is forbidden for outsiders to know. Protocol. This will be a very sensitive topic, Master. You will want to be careful with your questions or risk offending him. Not that that is much of a worry. Okay, well, ask him why are they so hostile to outsiders? Translation. He says that the fact that you have to ask, this is just one more example of your ignorance as an outsider, Master. He says you are blind. Translation, his people believe they are part of the land, living with it. You and your kind dare to raise yourself above it. You remove yourself. Translation, that act of removal makes you an outsider, separate from all that is important. You could never understand how unwelcome you are. Uh, ooh, well, what do you mean, raise myself above the land? Translation. Translation. He says that outsiders use machines to convey them and to make their lives easier. This severs a connection with the land. Translation. Connection to the soil must be made through flesh. A sacred animal is the only external tool to be used. This assertion has confused us as the chieftain had literally just asked us to procure him two moisture evaporators in a related quest. So we ask, ask why he bargained for the evaporators when they are unnatural. Translation. Translation. He says that the use of these blasphemous things will only be tolerated because outsider interference has forced it upon them. Translation. If your kind had not come here, he would not have to defend their ways or their land. How does he have contact with the land when completely covered? Translation. Translation. He says that the robes are sacred, Master, and you would not understand. Sand people are never uncovered outside of the most private moments. Wait, never, but not even in death? Translation. Translation. Never. That is their way, Master. Unfortunately, in our travels in the Dune Sea, we had been attacked many times by sand people ambushes. And so we can say, tell him I apologize for previously unwrapping his warriors. Protocol. Is that wise, Master? They may have assumed that the disguises you used were replicas instead of being taken off their dead. Whether we feel it's important or sheer curiosity, we can say, just tell him I want to see what happens. Translation. <laughs> Translation. The result is predictable. You have desecrated their dead. Happily, it seems the peace is over. It is time to kill. It goes without saying, due to the magnitude of insult and insolence, the Sand People become hostile. Ah! You shall fall. Combat mode active. However, if we wisely choose our words more carefully, we can then instead ask the chieftain about the history of the Sand People. Translation. Translation. He says that he will not master. There is one storyteller in each clan, and only he may recite the histories. Ask if we can meet this storyteller. Translation. Translation. He says that you don't understand. They must never be told to someone who might say them incorrectly out of ignorance. Translation. To speak them in error is a blasphemy punishable by death. Only their greatest warriors are even permitted to listen to the tales. How can I prove that I'm a worthy warrior? Translation. He doesn't know, Master. 
His people usually kill outsiders since you are an outsider yourself. That would not suffice. Translation. The greatest challenge for a warrior is to face a great dragon, the largest predator on Tatooine. Fight one of those and bring back a dragon pearl. Disgust. I think he's making fun of you, Master. He doesn't believe an outsider could do such a thing. Where can I find this great dragon? Translation. There is a dragon in the far eastern Dune Sea, but he claims you could never defeat it. Here is a map to the area. Translation. There is a hunter, a Twi'lek, that is sometimes seen out there. Perhaps he would be of some help. And before we leave, we can further inquire. What is a dragon pearl? Translation. Stones polished in the gullet of the beast. Apparently they are valuable items. Tell him farewell for now. Translation. <laughs> Translation, we are free to leave. Taking the chief up on the offer and killing the mighty crate dragon in their lair, we can then forego the precious crate dragon pearl, which is a great crystal for your lightsaber, and hand it to the chief in hopes he will hold up his side of the bargain and allow us to speak to the Sand People's official historian, in which he says, The Sand People chieftain seems grateful to you or at least less inclined to smash your head open like a pocky grub seed. And we ask, now will you tell me the history of your clan? Translation, you have been told that to be considered worthy of hearing the histories, you need to bring him a dragon pearl from a great dragon. Translation, he says the discussion is closed until you fulfill this condition. He thinks you are just making fun of his traditions. Not at all, here is a dragon pearl. Translation. He is stupefied, Master. He never thought you could return with such an item. Such a thing has not been done in many years. Translation. He will allow you to meet the storyteller, but also gives a warning. If you dare to repeat the histories incorrectly, you will be killed. Translation. The storyteller will be summoned to one of the rooms here in the Enclave. He seems to think this is a great honor for you, Master. The Sand People Chieftain has taken the Dragon Pearl. Our quest is updated. We have received 250 XP. And the Sand People's Historian has appeared in the tent behind us. Approaching him, we learn. Compared to the warriors that you've encountered, the Sand People Storyteller is relatively calm in his movements and speech, but he still regards you coldly. Translation. He identifies himself as the Storyteller, Master. He has been told of your warrior skills and will speak the history to you. To learn more, we can say, I am honored. Ask him what he records. Translation. There is only one accepted history, passed orally to each successive generation. Translation. A book or data pad can be taken away, cheapening the value of what it contains. To commit it to paper or storage is to remove it from the people. Confused that the law is only spoken, we can say, he will speak it. They don't write it down. Translation. Theirs is an oral history, Master, an active part of their lives. It is only permitted to relay the tales face to face. Ask him, what good will these histories be to me? Translation, he doesn't know what an outsider will gain. His people learn a sense of their importance in the world. Each generation must speak the tales of all the previous. Translation, a book or data pad can be taken away, cheapening the value of what it contains. To commit it to paper or storage is to remove it from the people. Right. Still, oral histories are often inaccurate. Translation. He says that you dare not question the accuracy of his information. The stories are learned perfectly by each successive storyteller. Translation. In fact, they aren't allowed to speak the stories aloud unless they are exact. Any error is considered a blasphemy punishable by death. Criticism. It seems inefficient to me, Master. A score of apprentice storytellers would be slaughtered each generation. What if the Elder died before completing the teachings? He has a point. That's a good question. Ask him that. Translation. Apprentices are trained from birth. Very few speak the words in error. Storytellers are most often lost in battle between tribes. Translation. 
Any tribe that loses its storyteller is obviously unworthy of existing. They lose their connection to history and destroy themselves within fighting soon after. At this point, we can ask what topics can we choose from and then learn of the four major segments of the Sand People's history. Translation. You may choose to hear the history or you may choose not to. Their history is a single entity that cannot be partitioned. Translation. The only exception is in continuing the tales once they have begun. If you leave, when you return, he will continue from where he left off. It's then we begin the history with the Sand People's ancient times. Translation. It begins with the ancient times. They were not Sand People, for there was no sand. The land was green with life, and they walked without wrappings. Translation. Though the land was beautiful, they lived apart from the land. They built their walls high and saw beyond the horizon. They dared to reach the stars. Translation. There are no words for how long ago this was. It was before the outsiders, before the abduction, before the cities fell, before the builders. Treading carefully to not offend, we can say, I want to ask questions about what I've heard. Cautionary, I should warn you, Master, that any questioning of their interpretation may be seen as trying to change the meaning of what was said. Clarification, they may consider this to be speaking the words in error, a blasphemy they would attempt to kill you for. Taking our chances, we say, I want to ask something about the ancient times. Clarification. It would appear that they once had a thriving, technologically advanced society, but were wiped out by a much more sophisticated alien species. Much more sophisticated alien species? Is there anything in the galactic records that would verify this? Negative. I am no library, but since there is no Republic record of this planet having sentient life before Zerka colonization, I doubt you will find such evidence. Right, well... Can he clarify how long ago Tatooine was green with life? Doubting. I don't believe he can, Master. Even if their stories are exact and unchanged, it is likely they were first told thousands of years after these events occurred. This has become very much like a creation myth for his people. There is no date. It simply was. So it seems Tatooine was once lush and green until the builders came. It's then we can ask, Ask him if these builders resemble any modern species. Translation. He only understands the builders as an iconic force meant to test the resolve of his people. He is not making sense, Master. Clarification. They claim their stories are repeated unchanged, but they have demonized these builders. In their minds, they wreaked such havoc they could not possibly be flesh and blood. Curious if we can help turn myth to reality, we say, hmm, ask if they have an image that we could compare with current species. Cautionary. Master, this line of questioning may be interpreted as attempting to change the story. He may react poorly. Taking a gamble to try and find out who these builders were, we can say, just do it. Translation. <laughs> Cautionary, as expected, he is claiming you have committed blasphemy. Warming blasters, combat is inevitable. With that, the denizens of the Sand People Enclave descend upon us. But this is the perfect time to note, before we move to the next section titled Enslavement, to solve the mystery of the Builders, we need only play the game further to learn the identity of the accursed Builders that destroyed the once green planet of Tatooine and enslaved the Sand People with that of the Rakatans. The Rakatan species is responsible for the infinite empire and technology that created the Star Forge and were created specifically for the Knights of the Old Republic game. So it's an amazing tie-in that in Legends at least, they were pervasive in subjugating many planets and peoples including the Sand People and destroying the once lush Tatooine. But to learn what happened and why they left Tatooine eventually, we need to get back on the historian's good side and not probed too deeply during his oral history lessons. It's then we can learn of the Sand People's time of enslavement. 
translation. His arrogant people touched the stars, and this sin drew the attention of the builders. The builders did not touch the stars, they lashed them to millstones. Translation. Great demons of metal stripped the world of its riches, until all that was left was the green of the ground. The great cities were lifted away. Translation. Those that had used the wealth were taken along with it, transgressors abducted to serve past the sky, seeding the stars with penitent, adaptable slaves. I want to ask something about the time of enslavement. Clarification. I believe they were occupied by this technologically superior species for a substantial period. Stripping an entire planet of usable resources would have taken generations. Generations? But... Why would the invaders have done this? Obvious. The same reason Zerka Corporation is attempting it now. Expanding empires need tremendous amounts of resources. Right, and how many of these people were taken off world? Translation, he has no number. He claims that those that were taken were examples of the worst of his kind. Arrogant and uncaring of the land. Doubtful. Master, this is just another distortion due to their demonization of the builders. It's like claiming an aspect of his people were taken, not actual individuals. Clearly, history has colored his view. Of course, only the inferior meatbags were taken. The remaining were his ancestors, after all. It must have been special. We could attempt to try and persuade the historian that his lineage may not have been as special as he claims, however that will just result in unnecessary combat. So to continue the history, we then move on to the Great War. Translation. There came a time when the builders were also judged for their crimes. After generations, a plague weakened them, and the time of the Great War began. Translation. The builders faltered, and his people realized why they had been punished, so that they understood the crime, and would now strike down the greater offender. Translation, they worked chaos in the machines, so they destroyed themselves. The builders fought back, laying waste to the green, that had been misused with fire from above. Translation, soil became glass, grinding to sand. But the fight was long planned, and his people were safe. Deep in Cape Holmes, carved from Valley Wall, they were free. We can then ask for further clarification on why the Rakatans would leave the planet. Clarification. The occupying force suffered some sort of species-wide plague that lowered their numbers over time. His people used this extended weakness to sabotage their larger ships. The response of the Builders appears to have been to lay waste to the entire surface of Tatooine. But the Builders possessed superior technology. How could the Sand People survive such an attack? Hypothesis. If his people were moving away from technology for a long time under the Builders, they may have had extensive cave systems that could grant shelter. I would also suggest that, given the evidence of the massive shift in the nature of their society, most of them did not survive. Sick or not, but how could they repel such a powerful species? Doubting. They didn't, Master. They struck a blow, but the storyteller only believes they won because the builders were gone when they emerged from their caves. That does not mean they defeated anyone. It seems clear that the Builders simply sterilized their problem and left. The enemy judged them not worthy to fight. But the planet was devastated. What kind of weapon could do so much damage? Clarification. I may not have properly conveyed how long they fought with the Builders. Given time, any number of armaments could destroy a world. Hypothesis. Perhaps this is another distortion. Their climate may have begun to fail due to their unrestrained development even before the Builders arrived. Looking back thousands of years later, such a shift could easily be attributed to the much-hated conquerors. post Ricardan devastation, it's then we learn of the part of their history that's titled The Long Walk. Editing, if I may, Master. This section of his tale details several millennia of The Long Walk. 
their nomadic wanderings as they accept their identity in a desert world? Rather than strain my circuits on his dialect, might we just assume there was much fighting over who has the biggest bantha and move on to more recent things? Choosing to listen, we can say, no, I want to hear it all. Resignation. Very well, Master. <coughs> Impatience. Master, I refuse to inconvenience you with this. He spouted names of petty tribal fights in deserts so distant they might as well be across the galaxy. Really, Master, I'm sure it's important to him, but it has nothing of value that you could ever put to use. We will have to discuss this impudence, HK-47. Agreement. Of course, Master. Just no more of their inane wandering. It's then we can learn about the final piece of Sand People history, bringing us to present day and the interlopers on Tatooine. This segment's labeled The Outsiders. Translation. The tribes spread far, distant from each other, but all the Sand People and all cherish the land that remains. The sand would not be misused. Translation. Then machines fell from the stars again. Outsiders like you that brazenly walked apart from the land. And greater still was the insult to come. Translation. These outsiders reminded them of their past transgression. Of the time when they too walked apart from land. The outsiders, your kind, looked like their ancient abducted. Translation. So it is to the current sons that the Sand People hate all outsiders and give them no footing. You come again time after time, adaptable slaves to the machine. Clarification. They appear to hate humanity with a passion only rivaled by their hatred of the Builders. For some reason, you resemble what they once were. Perhaps there is a lingering fear that you are their tainted selves returning from exile among the stars. Wait, so they hate us because we're like them? Is it a physical or societal similarity? Cautionary. Master, if you mean to suggest that humanity is ancestrally linked to ancient Tatooine, you will strain his belief system to its pitiful meatbag maximum. Sensing that humanity and sand people were most likely linked, we cannot ask the question without causing further violence. So instead we ask, is there anything further? Editing. The last thousand years are full of conflicts with different groups of attempted planetary settlers, all of whom are poorly described, long dead, and likely untraceable. I believe I have truncated it down to the usable bits in what was already said. I hope it is enough, Master. And with that, we can thank him and say if we want more history, we will return later. Translation. We are free to leave. And thus concludes the unabridged story of the Sand People. And I will be exploring in the next video, I will be exploring the murky moral implications of is it better to destroy the Sand People due to their extreme beliefs or allow them to continue to live on Tatooine?